Well, right now, President Trump and former President, uh, former Vice President Joe Biden are racing to 270 electoral college votes. It is still unclear if either will reach that milestone needed anytime soon, with counting still going on in a number of swing states. Meantime, Central Florida races have been called and here now to give us a wrap up of results 2020 and what to expect moving forward. News 6 political analyst and UCF history professor Dr. Jim Clark and welcome back. We know it was a long, long day yesterday. It was a long night. And at least Florida, for the most part, is, is done in all of this. But talk about, you know, how this election has shaped up so far. Well, I think uh, people were surprised by Florida. Uh, the Biden campaign, in some sense, did well. Uh, they flipped two counties, Seminole and Pinellas, in the I-4 corridor. They uh, flipped Duval County up in Jacksonville. So uh, he gets bragging rights. The problem was Miami-Dade where President Trump turned out huge numbers of uh, Cuban-American, Venezuelan-American, Nicaraguan-American voters uh, claiming that Biden was a, a, a socialist candidate. It worked. His uh, total increased by 50 percent in Miami-Dade. And instead of coming out of Miami-Dade with a huge 300,000 vote margin, as Hillary Clinton had done, he came out with only about 100,000, and that doomed him statewide. And Jim, you know, we always talk about the I-4 corridor. That is the, you know, that's who, who wins this race at the end. I mean, and we're talking about Biden winning a lot, but then losing the state. Yeah, uh, for years, uh, since 1996, the I-4 corridor has picked the winner in effect uh, and had uh, played a major role. This time, uh, it didn't come through at all. It played... Uh, uh, no role, and it'll be interesting to see now if all the focus moves to Miami-Dade. And, you know, talking about Miami-Dade, the Latino voter turnout really big with this. What do you think happened there? Uh, the socialism issue worked for Donald Trump. Uh, remember the uh, Biden-Obama administration tried to normalize relations with Cuba. They thought a younger generation of Cubans would accept this, You'll remember there were direct airplane flights, there were cruise ships going to Cuba, and what we saw last night was that uh, Cuban Americans are not interested in any kind of improved relations with Cuba, and they took it out on uh, Joe uh, Biden last night. And when we look at, you know, the uh, local house races, there was really no big surprise last night. No, uh, the incumbents in central Florida did as predicted. The only, again, surprises were in Miami-Dade, where two Democratic uh, representatives went down to defeat again because of the Cuban-American vote. And we're talking about 35 Senate seats up for uh, election uh, yesterday. Any big surprises when it comes to the Senate? Yeah, I think the biggest surprise is people expected the Democrats, again, to do better. Uh, it looks like they may only pick up one seat. Last night we were talking, uh, would they pick up three or four? Uh, and uh, so this has got to be a disappointing election for the Democrats in terms of the House and the Senate. All right, Jim, the big question, what needs to happen for either candidate to be able to claim victory? How is this going to go? Uh, the Democrats are betting on millions of unopened absentee ballots to carry the day. Uh, obviously, we don't know what's in those ballots. For example, in Philadelphia, uh, it's believed that uh, the bulk of the uh, ballots will favor Biden. They come from suburban areas around Philadelphia, but we don't know that, and Biden trails badly. Both candidates have paths to victory, and uh, I have a feeling uh, the whole thing will now move into the courts, and they will bring in the lawyers. All right, so when do we see this finishing up? Uh, any any guess? He laughs. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's probably the best response. Yeah. Well, we we do want to touch on Amendment Two for Florida. You know, when we talk about raising minimum wage uh, up to fifteen dollars an hour by the year twenty twenty six, how do you see that uh, shaping Florida? Yeah, I think that's going to really impact Central Florida. There are about three hundred thousand minimum wage employees in Florida many of them here working in the, the tourist industry. And so mm -hmm. they will get a pay raise from uh, 
8.56 an hour to uh, $10 an hour, but they have to wait till next September to get that. All right, Jim. Well, I have a feeling you're going to be around for, for quite some time, Jim. All <laughs> don't, right. Don't go far. Yeah, don't right. go far. We have your cot in the back. Thank you. All right, Jim. Thank you.